Hello and welcome, it's that time again, the monthly and finally podcast review of February. A light-eyed review of the month in football, a month which was mostly notable for flap and panic. The repercussions of the transfer window were still being felt, particularly by Beijing Sinobo Guan striker Cedric Bacambu. Bacambu was set to sign for Barcelona on a loan to buy deal, only to get off a flight to Seoul and find out the deal had been withdrawn by Barca's sporting director Eric Abadal. Bacambu was not willing to just forget about the moment and asked and got transfer database website Transfer Marked to change his profile to list him as almost FC Barcelona. Odd that he talked about it as being a dream move when he had previously been on the books of Real Madrid though. The biggest surprise of the transfer window was AC Milan's attempt to sign Wigan Athletic defender Anthony Robinson for £6 million. The move only fell through when his med- Milan medical spotted a heart problem that needed further checks. It's still hard to believe Milan wanted a Wigan Athletic defender though. Guardiola said this month that he believes his time at Manchester City will be regarded as a failure if he does not win the Champions League there. Pep said that last year was an extraordinary year for City, but people say he didn't win the Champions League. Well, yes, mate, that's because they've already won everything domestically under other managers. The money they were spending on you was meant to be to win them the Champions League. You're supposed to be the best coach in the world, so you need to be able to win everything when you have the most money to spend, or you're going to be seen as no better than those who came before. In Spain, a second division match between Fuenlabrada and Girona descended into farce with the help of VAR. Fuenlabrada player Cristobal Marquez was sent off for a high challenge on an opponent. Marquez headed off down the tunnel for an early bath when the ref decides to go and have a look at a pitch side monitor. Seeing it again, the ref decides he's been a bit harsh there, so he, someone is sent to bring a fuming Marquez back. On Marquez's return to the pitch, the ref rescinds the red and shows him a yellow instead. But the match was not even able to kick off again before Marquez got involved in a heated argument with Girona's Alex Granell and both players were booked. So Marquez got that early bath after all. FIFA president Gianni Infantino has told CAF that they should hold the AFCON every four years rather than two in future. His thinking is that it would earn more money that way, and clearly that's the only thing he cares about. He probably does have a point that it's played too often. As is now traditional, Neymar managed to get himself ruled out of the game nearest his birthday through injury once more. This year, he blamed the club for being cautious with him, while holding a huge party which most of his teammates attended to Thomas Tuchel's chagrin. This is the third year in a row that Neymar has been injured on his birthday, though he claims he wanted to play and the club just refused to let him. I'm sure we all believe that though, don't we? Conveniently, he then managed to get himself sent off needlessly just in time for his suspension to leave him free to attend the Rio Carnival, another event he has always been unavailable to play during. Coincidence, obviously. Gareth Bale's agent, Jonathan Barnett, has ruled out the chance of Bale ever returning to Spurs. Barnett said it's not about the money, but Spurs could not afford him. So it is about the money then, eh? Salomon Kalou admitted he nearly joined Villa in January. Kalou had been ordered to train apart from the rest of the Hertha Berlin first team squad by then head coach Jürgen Klinsmann. His old Chelsea teammate John Terry is assistant manager at Villa and called Kalou up to ask him if he wanted to join the villains. Unfortunately for Kalou, the move could not be completed due to him not being European or a current international. I would say it's a lucky break for Villa, but they ended up signing Baston instead who was at best a bizarre transfer. The South Korean fans who went to court to complain about their mental anguish after Cristiano Ronaldo never played in a match in the country won compo. Is that really mental anguish? I get that Juve breached the contract so they should have to pay back the money and I get the fans probably deserve some kind of refund as tickets were sold on the back of Ronaldo appearing. But mental anguish compensation, I mean that's just embarrassing. While Kalu wasn't able to get his move back to the Prem, former Watford striker Idiana Galu did everything he possibly could to ensure he got his dream move to Manchester United. While most players look to get paid as much as possible, the Nigerian striker took a pay cut in order to join the Mancunians on loan for the rest of the season. There are a number of clubs who wanted him, but he was only interested in going to the Red Devils. Poor Igalu then had to miss the winter break training camp in Spain due to coronavirus travel restrictions and was left to train on his own as he had arrived from China. 
Lucky he even managed to get a move at all as it turned out. Bournemouth striker Josh King was one of the options that didn't pan out and he missed out on a dream return to the club who first joined as a 16-year-old. Even he must enjoy seeing the Lucas Year delight on Igalu's face when he finally got to play for United though. It's the first sub I've seen come on in years that didn't need 20 minutes to get ready. Normally they're looking all round for all their kit but he had his on just in case. No doubt he'd slept in it since the move was done. The coronavirus really began causing havoc in February, not just with Man United's training plans either. The Asian Champions League postponed all games involving Chinese clubs until April and May. Travel restrictions imposed by Australia meant that games were due to be played there were postponed for at least a month. That postponement ended up spreading to all the AFC Cup matches too, which were pushed back until April. South Africa's Olympic team withdrew from a planned friendly against Japan that was set for March. Italy began the postponing of matches or playing them behind closed doors, which has only ramped up since. Cameroon striker Christian Basagog, who plays his club football in China for Henan Jianye, donated £13,000 to help fellow Cameroonians stranded in China. It was believed there were around 300 Cameroon nationals in the area, 200 in the city of Wuhan alone. Basagog shows that footballers do have a heart. After failing to get their fans to stop using pyrotechnics during games, which have led to numerous penalties from the DFB, Hamburg have been given permission to run a trial allowing fans to use them legally at a match. They will be limited to 10 smoke devices which are to be let off as the teams arrive on the pitch before kick-off. I'm not sure that's going to work somehow. Barcelona's sporting director Eric Abadal has followed the tried and trusted Jose Mourinho blame the players until they stopped trying for your method of success. Abadal managed to hurt the man you least want to upset at Barcelona, his boss, Lionel Messi, by blaming the players and claiming they were not really trying under Valverde. Messi responded on social media by telling him, in essence, to shut up or man up and accept responsibility. Either David Moyes is not following Steve Bruce's lead, or he just couldn't find any coaches named David. While Bruce fills his backroom staff at Newcastle with people called Steve, no doubt to, to avoid the problems of getting names wrong that played Bobby Robson, Moyes has instead added Kevin Nolan and Paul Nevin. I have to say, Nolan seems an odd choice. He was one of the least professional players in the modern era, always carrying too much weight because of his heavy drinking and poor attitude to training. Hated at Bolton by the fans as well, but not exactly because of his weight issues, but not exactly an example for play, young players to look up to, is he? Finally, England has realised that no one else is going to follow what they did with a shorter transfer window and reverted back to the standard European transfer window closing date. Two seasons were wasted out of what can only be termed arrogance. Someday someone will have to explain to me why they think shortening the window fixes the issues that were created by putting a window in place in the first place anyway. Plymouth manager Ryan Lowe has questioned the need for a winter break in the lower leagues. He just wants to keep going and also fails to see the point in the stoppage when players in League 1 and 2 can't afford to just jet abroad on winter sun holidays anyway. L'Equipe released their annual salary list for France's League 1 and showed unsurprisingly that PSG manager Thomas Tuchel is the highest paid manager. In fact, you could put the salaries of the managers in Nîmes, Metz, Toulouse, Emions, Dijon, Reims, Angers, Brest, Strasbourg, Montpellier... Nantes and Rennes together and it would still not come to more than he is paid. In terms of players, PSG players dominate that too, with Neymar earning over €1 million Euros more, than month, more per month than the second highest paid player, who is Mbappe, also a PSG. Swindon are trying a new way to finance the buying of, their, of the freehold of their county ground stadium from Swindon Borough Council. They are hoping to raise enough by selling shares in the ground to fans, which will be priced at £19.69 in honour of the club's only League Cup final win in, you guessed it, yes, 1969. The club said that they will need to at least 2,300 supporters to purchase shares if they are to afford the £2.2 million asking price. This month also saw Manchester United file a complaint to the press regulator over the coverage of the attack on the House of United's Executive Vice Chairman, Ed Woodward. United hit out at the tabloid rag the scum, son, sorry, who they alleged to have prior warning of the attack, which was why their reporter just happened to be there and filming in good quality. They also claimed that the presence of the scum journal had both encouraged and rewarded the perpetrators. 
Well, if anyone would know the kind of low-life, dirty tricks a scum journalist, and I used the word journalist in the loosest sense, would stoop to, it would be United's ex-scum journalist Neil Ashton, who they recently brought in to help with their media coverage. Reigning Scottish champions Celtic revealed a pre-tax profit of over £24 million for the final six months of last year, helped immensely by the sale of Kieran Tierney to Arsenal for around about £24 million. Despite a rise in salary, their profit increased over £5.5 million over the same period the previous year. Storm Ciara caused a bit of a, well, a, a storm really in February. Matches in Holland and, B- and Belgium were called off, as was... Bizarrely, Manchester City against West Ham. Even though 35 miles down the road, Sheffield United were able to play and beat Bournemouth. Hamilton Aki's manager, Brian Rice, was unhappy about playing during the high winds and called for a wind meter to be introduced in Scotland. There was an odd transfer in Paraguay as Olympia Asuncion announced on social media that they had agreed a deal in principle to sign Emmanuel Adebayor if they sold enough season tickets. The club announced that they needed to sell an extra 20,000 tickets, which would take them to 35,000 season ticket holders over the next few days. It seemed to do the trick as they did sign him, but it's hard to imagine anyone rushing out to buy a season ticket on the back of the potential signing of a lazy get like that. That seems more likely to put people off to me. The scourge of racism is just not going away in football. Japanese international Takafusa Kubo is on loan at Real Mallorca for the season from Real Madrid. The teenager was named amongst the subs against Espanyol and was off down the touchline warming up when it was decided Mallorca needed to make a sub. The coaches called him back by making what can only be called slitty eyes gestures. And then Deli Ali decided to prove that footballers can join in on casual racism by posting a social media video of himself in an airport lounge wearing a face mask, moving the camera to look at an Asian man before immediately zooming in on a bottle of antiseptic hand wash. Ali quickly took the clip down and posted an apology on Chinese social media site Weibo. Luckily for him, the coronavirus issue quickly died down and went away. Right? Back to football itself, and Fred criticised the attitude of his Manchester United teammates. Hard to argue with what he said, as he basically told the other players they need to work harder and talk less. Fred certainly can't be criticised for his work rate. His first touch and range of passing, maybe, but not his effort. Speaking of criticism, and Jordan Pickford, he of the shorter arms and the T-Rex fame, has whined about the criticism he gets. Incredibly, he has claimed that the stick he gets for being so utterly sh- um, rubbish is because he plays for England or could it be because you are crap still if there's one thing that is for sure Pickford will always find someone else to blame and that's why he'll never fix his problems as he doesn't think he has any arrogance or stupidity or both I'll let you decide Hertha Berlin was shocked as despite spending the most money in the January transfer window to help head coach Jürgen Klinsmann build a team Klinsmann walked out on them who was only in the role for 10 weeks before quitting. It did seem a strange appointment at the time, but this really was a surprise resignation. Britain's richest man, having just bought a Formula 1 team and a French League 1 team, has ruled out investing in the Premier League team for now at least. Despite having tried numerous times to convince Roman Abramovich to sell Chelsea to him, Jim Ratcliffe says English clubs are just too expensive. Inept former Arsenal manager Unai Emery launched a stand-up comedy career this month, beginning with claims that he would have become the best coach in the world if there had been VAR when he managed PSG. According to Emery, PSG only lost in the Champions League both times of his two years at the French club because of poor refereeing. It must have been an attempt to live up to his nickname of Dick Emery, as he continued on about how he had a good season with Arsenal, coming fifth behind Spurs. I'm not sure any Arsenal fan would agree that a good season is finishing behind Spurs. Oh, and Emery also said he would have been successful at the Gooners if given more time. He's a very funny man, Unai Emery. David Beckham's new MLS team, Inter Miami, are facing having to change their name already, even though it's just their first season in Major League Soccer. Inter Milan have won a trademark battle over the use of Inter. Personally, I'm glad as Inter Miami is the cackiest name for a team ever. It's the kind of name you use on fantasy football when all the ones you wanted were gone and you get desperate on the deadline to submit your team in time. 
You have to wonder what is going on at South End United. As Sol Cam- Campbell spent this month complaining about losing eight players in a transfer window while not being able to bring any in because of the financial situation. If he knows there are financial problems, why moan about it? Just seems like another manager passing the buck and looking for excuses for failure. Frank Lampard was another who probably who was probably disappointed by the lack of incomings in January, but he'll be happier now as Chelsea agreed a deal to sign Ajax winger Hakim Ziyech in the summer for a fee of over £30 million. FIFA announced an expansion of their Club World Cup for the summer of 2021 in China. Instead of the usual six, they've decided to increase it to 24, with three from Africa, three from North America, six from South America, two from Asia and eight from Europe plus the host national champion and the winner of a playoff between another Asian team and the Oceania champions. Each entrant is to receive $50 million, plus there is a $115 million prize on offer for the winner. A former head coach of PSG, Luis Fernandez, who had success before the Qatari era, has called current head coach Thomas Tuchel the worst manager since Qatar's takeover, Obviously, he's forgotten all about Unai Emery, who even managed to fail to win a one-horse race in League One in his first full season in charge. Fulham fullback Cyrus Christie criticised social media companies for failing to act on racist abuse after being part of a Republic of Ireland team that suffered a 5-1 thrashing at the hands of Denmark. Christie suffered racist abuse and death threats and called social media firms such as Twitter and Facebook useless. I agree with him, but if you don't like their service, stop using it and they will have to change it. If all the players in football club close their accounts until they do take action, it would change. CAF have been found to have a lot of suspicious payments coming out of their accounts after an audit by PricewaterhouseCoopers. They found lots of payments totalling over $8 million have gone out of the accounts with little or no supporting documentation to explain what they were for. They also queried the deal with Tactical Steel, which was made with the direct involvement of the president of CAF, Ahmed Ahmed. Tactical Steel just happened to be run by a close friend of Ahmed's attaché and got the deal to supply sportswear equipment to CAF in a very strange deal. There was shock all round after UEFA punished Man City with a two-season ban from European competition. While it is difficult to argue that punishment is wrong, the fact that so much of the evidence was obtained illegally makes this a grey area to act on. It does make you wonder why it is okay for a person who's been involved in illegal activities to give evidence and receive immunity, while a hacker who's involved in an illegal activity to get the evidence and then whistleblows is prosecuted. Anyway, Man City are certainly unhappy and registered an appeal with Cass. Bayer Leverkusen striker Kevin Volland has been linked with a move away and now has basically issued a come and get me plea to anyone interested. It wasn't picky, saying he would love to play in England, Italy and Spain. It seems like the number of reasons for not playing football increased this month as air pollution caused the postponement of a game between Ibar and Real Sociedad. A landfill site near Ibar collapsed and caused fires which put dangerous toxins into the air and the game had to be suspended. Erling Haaland needed just 59 minutes of playing time in the Bundesliga to become player of the month for January. After joining Dortmund from RB Salzburg in the winter transfer window, his appearances were limited to less than an hour's worth of total playing time as a substitute. Despite that, the Norwegian striker scored five goals. Well, he certainly doesn't play like his dad, does he? Gucci, now managing Almeria in the Spanish second tier, has had to deny rumours that he was out partying with the players in a nightclub after the team's third defeat in four games. He said that if anyone could find a picture of him with the players or alone in a nightclub in Almeria, he would not just resign but would pay back the club every penny they had paid him. Having been to Almeria, I can understand exactly why he said that. It's not really a place you go to if you want a party. There was no getting away from casual racism in February, as BBC pundit Craig Ramage hit out at his former team, Derby County. Unfortunately, he directed his comments only at the young black lads on the team and gave them the blame, in essence stereotyping them as lazy and arrogant. At the time, no one on the show he was speaking on pulled him up for the comments, so the BBC obviously felt the need to save face by sacking him immediately after when they faced a storm of criticism. After Ousmane Dembele suffered an injury which Barcelona claimed was set to keep the player out for six months, despite him having previously been sidelined for four months with the same injury, Barca sought permission to sign a player outside the transfer window. In Spain, rules do allow that if a player is ruled out for more than five months, you can sign a replacement. 
and Barca were desperate for a forward with Luis Suarez out term. They signed striker Martin Braithwaite from Leganesh, who would then refuse permission to sign a replacement to their fury. It's clearly a rule open to abuse, and Leganesh, well, you, can't un- you can understand why they complained. Barca were rocked by allegations from a local radio station this month, which claimed that they had hired a firm called I3 Ventures to produce social media posts that disparaged its own players. According to SER Catalonia, I3 managed dozens of accounts on Twitbook that have attacked current players such as Lionel Messi and Gerard Piquet. Also, former manager Pep Guardiola and ex-players Xavi and Puyol were said to be impugned as well. More understandably, the presidential rivals of current president Bartomeu were also attacked. Barcelona deny the allegations, though they do admit I3 work for them. In Portugal, Moussa Moreira scored to give Porto a 2-1 lead over Vitoria Guimaraes and was the victim of racist abuse after the goal. After a few minutes of abuse, he walked off the pitch despite his teammates and opponents attempting to persuade him to play on. Porto subbed him, but surely they should have supported him by the whole team walking off with him. I bet they would have been quick to walk off if they'd been losing. Mino Raiola and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got into a sl- slanging match over flop midfielder Paul Pogba. Mino tried to suggest Man United were holding the Pog prisoner after Ole said the Frenchman was United's players, not United player even, not Mino's. All a storm in a teacup really, as Pogba clearly belongs to social media and sponsors. Well, he certainly doesn't belong in a Man United shirt, that's for sure. And Stephen is being investigated over claims that their game against Oldham in November should not have been postponed. Stephen Hitch had invoked invoke the rule allowing for postponement if three players are selected for international duty, but it's now been alleged that just two players were eligible to be counted. Unsurprisingly, the complaint came from Oldham. A couple of Qataris who own football clubs were in trouble in European football this month. First off, there was Malaga's owner, who was accused of misappropriation of club funds, among other charges, by minor shareholders in the club. After he bought the club in 2010, it went on a spending spree and ever since has suffered financial difficulties. Meanwhile, PSG president Nasser Al Khalifi is also facing a legal battle after being charged with inciting criminal mismanagement in connection with allegations against former FIFA General Secretary Jerome Falcher. In his role as chairman of the BM Media Group, Al Khalifi is said to have given Falca rent free accommodation in an Italian villa that he owned. A bribery complaint against Al Khalifi was dropped after he reached an amicable agreement with FIFA. Would that amicable agreement have involved brown envelopes? It would certainly be ironic if he avoided bribery charges by use of bribes, but utterly unsurprising in this world. American businessman Rob Kuhig has completed a takeover of Wickham Wonders. I hope I pronounced his name right, by the way. Settling the club's existing debt and funding a new 15-year lease on their stadium. Such an odd choice a team to buy. I only remember them from playing Premier Manager on the Amiga when you had to choose a team from what is now League 2 to start with. The first time I chose, I played it like I randomly chose Wickham. I wonder if that is why Kuig wanted them. Perhaps he used to play as them too. Despite failing the fitness tests initially, worryingly considering their jobs, Premier League refs David Coote and Andy Madley have been added to the FIFA international list, making them eligible to officiate European and international games. This was just after Coote showed he was inept by missing Lo Celso's blatant stamp on Aspilicueta just days before. Even though he had the benefit of as many replays as he needed, he still could not see the foul. And of course, in his next match as the VAR official, he decided to give two totally different decisions about two almost identical incidents in the Leicester versus Man City match. Yet he is now being considered as one of the best officials in world football. I wonder the game is a mess. In Egypt, the Cairo derby match ended up in a complete farce. First off, the Egyptian Super Cup in Abu Dhabi ended up in a mass on-pitch brawl between the players and staff of both teams. Then the president of Zamalek, Murtada Mansour, said his team would boycott the league derby match because of fear and worry over the team's welfare. In the end, he changed his mind and sent the youth team, because obviously he's not worried about their welfare, but they failed to arrive on time and the game was abandoned and awarded to Al-Ali. The Egyptian FA then imposed a three-point penalty and fine on Zamalek, which Mansour is refusing to accept. Mansour claims that the FA are just trying to damage his club. There was a weird moment after FC Copenhagen scored against Celtic in Celtic Stadium. 
Michael Santos was trying to celebrate only for the police to intervene and it ended up with both Santos and a Copenhagen steward being charged with assault. It seemed more like stupidity on the part of police though than anything else. Madagascar are not just searching for escaped animals that sing I like to move it, move it. They are now on the hunt for the head of their football federation over embezzlement allegations. It does seem worrying how much corruption there is in African football. Something that should have been sorted by now. FIFA are putting a limit on international loans in and out of a team for eight next season. Then to drop it to six the following season. Clubs such as Chelsea and Atalanta are the ones likely to be most affected. Atalanta alone have 55 players out on loan, most of them on international loans as well. League 2 side Oldham Athletic have been served with yet another winding up order. Worrying times even before the coronavirus caused issues for them. And then there was Hibs uh, American owner Ron Gordon, who has a plan to increase revenue. He wants to bring back the sale of alcohol in Scottish football stadiums. I'm not sure whether that's a good idea or not, but I guess the only thing that matters to him is making money regardless of good or bad. So there we have it, a quick round-up of a February that was disrupted by storms and plagues and yet it was only given as an intro to what was to come as the world films a live-action remake of Contagion. Just as long as it is an Armageddon next. I don't think I could handle a revival of Aerosmith on top of everything else. Bye.